Honorable Deputy President, let's now move to the next topic of our conversation this evening, and this will be on a matter of national security. You were recently in Elgeo Maracot County, where you promised the people of Kerio Valley that you would do everything in your power to secure them. You've also been visiting other parts of this country, Masabit, Baringo, Samburu, Laikipia, West Pokot. More than 300 people have died in the last seven months alone in this country, killed by armed bandits. Livelihoods are lost. Children have not gone to school. Children have been killed. Kerio Valley re re residents have even petitioned the UN Secretary General, saying that their government has failed to provide them with security. In your manifesto, you say the security is a cornerstone of protecting people's livelihoods. Why has the government of Kenya, in which you've served as an assistant minister, as a minister, as a deputy president, been unable to secure the people of these counties? I, I quite agree with the feeling of many Kenyans. In fact, it's, it's yesterday. It's not, it's not even uh, uh, last week. It's yesterday. I was in El Geo Maracuet. And one of the uh, leaders there told us we have buried 114 people in that neighborhood. So, so it is indeed a live and serious matter. You have seen me in um, uh, 20, when, I, when we came into office in 2016, I called all the leaders from Baringo, El Geo Maracuet, uh, Pokot, Samburu, and we had a, a serious le leaders meeting in my office in Karen. And f because, of that, because of that meeting, for about three years, we went round, we mobilized all the governors, and we provided, we, we provided um, national police reserve in all those areas. And the situation was under control. But when we came into the handshake arrangement, a false narrative, very unfortunate false narrative, was, was rolled out that, oh, all these national police reserves in El Geo Maracuet, in Baringo, in West Pokot, were actually a militia that William Ruta would use at some point. And all the national police reserve were with the drone. A very reckless act. And with the withdrawal of the national police reserve, the situation went south. And that is why I was saying yesterday in El Geo Maracuet that we will do whatever it takes. And today, there is a program to build um, uh, security outposts. And, and I'm saying whatever it takes, even if it means bringing the military and military installations to support the police in some of these areas. In fact, you just reminded me, yesterday I overflew a huge track of land where three years ago I was standing there and it was all maize. Yesterday they haven't planted there for the last three years because of insecurity. So, so Insecurity is not only causing our children not to be in school. It is causing starvation. It is causing death. Yet, people want to treat it casually. But honorable let Deputy me tell President, you, let me, let me just allow in the me last to... three years, Mr. Deputy President, you have not spoken out about the issue in Kerio Valley. You have not said anything about the killings that have been taking place. Like the, you, they told you, 150 people buried this year. You spoke about it only yesterday. Where have you been in the last I have months? always been there. In fact, if you go and ask those people in those regions, I have always been present. We have buried many of those people with our own money. We've taken many of those people to hospital with our own money. 
I have deployed my personal resources to deal with that situation because I know it was a political, uh, it was a, a, a political agenda. You know, the withdrawal of the National Police Reserve was really an unfortunate act. But because it was intended to punish William Ruto, you know, never mind that many people lost their lives, is a, re a real tragedy. But that is the nature of our politics in Kenya. Honorable Ruto, Unfortunately. Honorable Ruto, you're saying that was done to punish you? What, what other explanation would you have? You go with the draw security personnel in the whole of that whole region, you know, you subject people to... How would that punish you, Honorable Ruto? Because I am the one who had led the whole, in fact, I am the one who had taken charge. In fact, I was there every two weeks in that region. I was there every two weeks. I am the one who mobilized the resources. I am the one who mobilized uh, the security men, the identification of the National Police, police Service. And, and, so, and so it um, looked like it was, it was, it was, Ruto, it was about me. me. It was never did about you, me. Did you mobilize those resources on a personal basis or as deputy president? As deputy president. So why would your government punish the deputy president? You live in Kenya, my good friends. And I am failing to understand it, sir. And, and, and you know... Are you <laughs> telling the people of Kerio Valley that 150 of them have been buried this year alone just because a government is punishing the deputy president? Not just that. The Kimware and the Aror Dams were cancelled intentionally to punish my supporters. That's it. We will come to that, sir. You, as the deputy president consume intelligence reports. Tell us, over the last 30 years, what is it that has led to this continuous cycle of violence in Kerio Valley, in Baringo, in Samburu, in West Pokot, even going as far as Masabit County? What causes this and what will you do, knowing the intelligence that you have? The biggest contributor to the situation we have in those regions is competition for resources, competition for water, competition for pasture, general uh, matters of uh, um, education, and precisely the reason why we had a plan on Radat Dam to provide the water for the whole of that belt, Aror, Kimware, Rada, uh, Lowat, these are dams that my thinking was if we provide water in these areas, we can sufficiently roll out irrigation. For your information, that whole career belt where people are fighting, it is a granary. We have the best mangoes from, from that region. We have uh, very good uh, soya that can be grown in that region. The only impediment is water, access to water. And there are enough rivers to be tapped. My solution to the whole of that region is twofold. Let us provide water for livestock. Let us provide water for irrigation. And let us get schools developed, as well as making sure that we provide road infrastructure. That's why we rolled out the road from Parbelo, cutting across that region, to come out on the other side in a place called Marich Pass, through Tot, through Chesongoch. And now there was also the road that was supposed to connect Capedo from uh, the other side of Turkana, coming to Nakuru. Opening up that area is the solution, opening up that area in terms of infrastructure and opening up that area in terms of water infrastructure will provide the solution. Unfortunately, there are people who don't see it that way. So you say that the Aror Kimorel Dam, you've recently said that you are going to complete it should you yes. be elected president. Yes. Why did it fail? I will. Yes, I will. It didn't fail. It was meant to fail. 
I mean, let Mr. me let Deputy me tell President. you. The, the, so, it is, as a deputy president, uh, sorry, sir, to just interject. As a deputy president, and like I started by saying, you've been minister before, you've been an assistant minister, we are talking about violence that has been taking place for decades, not just in the term that you've been deputy president. So this is not about you being punished now, unless you're telling us that for a long time, there are people that have been scheming to punish William Ruto by killing the people of Kerio Valley. That's not what I'm saying. I am saying we had a solution we had close to 5,000 national police reserves. In fact, we have um, we, we'd even moved a step forward to provide armored vehicles to make sure that we can follow whoever these uh, criminals are, right? We had a plan. Unfortunately, that plan was frustrated. And you know, the plan was, let's provide a national police reserve. Then, let us construct the roads. Then, let's provide water infrastructure. And then, let's provide school infrastructure. That way, you ease out people from that situation where they are today to a new environment where they appreciate education, they have food to eat, their animals have, uh, have, uh, have, have water and pasture, and then you can develop that region. In fact, in my mind, that's where the future of Kenya is, because we have huge tracts of land in, in that region. Honorable and the Richard. fact that people have been fighting in that region forever doesn't mean that they should continue fighting. Honorable we should Richard. find a solution.